today I'm going to be reviewing Spoolworks' new E3D Edge Filament from Philistruder. So Philistruder sent me a roll of their new uh, Spoolworks E3D Edge Filament and here's what it looked like when it arrived. It came in this box, it was shrink wrapped and I always like it when the company who makes their filament gives you information, just doesn't send you the filament and say here you go. So this one, it's a Lime 29 Limey, and it's a PETG based, and it, it's nice because they tell you the print temp, the heated bed temp, and they tell you adhesion glue stick. So, you know, you can do whatever you want, but it's nice when they give you a baseline and what they've tested it at and what they know it prints at well. Um, if you go on Phyllis Struder's website, you can see they sell everything you need for 3D printing, not just filament. They have hot ends and kits and upgrade kits for all different sorts of printers. And if you go to Filament, you can see this is one of the brands they sell by Spoolworks and it's E3D Edge. It has all different uh, colors. It comes in 1.75 and three millimeters. And this is supposed to be, it's not a typical PLA. It's a PETG based. And it's more of your finished, your, your high quality print. Um, it's not brittle like a P PLA. It doesn't snap off. It's a much more bendy. Um, they say it's, it's designed for the toughness of ABS, but the ease of printing of a PLA. Um, I've printed a few things. It prints great. It's a tiny bit trickier than PLA um, because it is a little um, more runny, but that can be adjusted in the settings and you get great prints with it. Um, it's not brittle. It's stronger than a PLA. So it's the next step after a PLA. It's what you would print when you want a really strong part or something durable or a nice glossy, nice looking finished part. Um, this isn't what you're just gonna print any old thing you're just testing out. This is what you're gonna print, print your, your really good quality prints in. You're gonna definitely need your fan on high if you're gonna do that, if you're gonna be printing uh, you know, a 50 or 60 degree angle, you want that fan running hot because it is printing at 240 degrees. You want it to cool down quick. But I've seen a common thing recently and that's for companies to say, you know, this filament will replace your PLA. This will be your everyday filament. Um, and it's definitely really nice. It's, it's a little more costly than a cheap $20 PLA, but there's a reason for it. It's, it's a lot better, it's a, it's a better quality. Um, it's nice, it's shiny, it, it prints a really great part. And um, again, it has this clear spool so you can see how much is left. You don't have to kind of guess at what you have left on there. So, um, like I said, I've printed some stuff off with it. They've come out great, but I'll show you um, the settings I used. We'll print off our three or four test prints and then come back down here, we can look at them and uh, I'll review them and tell you what I think. Okay, here we are at the computer and the first thing I wanted to show you was Philistruder's website and you can see um, they sell all sorts of different things. They sell hot ends, they sell all your circuit boards you might need and here's their filament section. So they have everything you'd want on here and you can go down to their E3D Edge filament and you can see there's all sorts of different colors they supply, the uh, different sizes this is where you can order it and it's got a lot of uh, nice, really good pictures of, of the results you're going to get. The first one is this chess piece and this is a, a basic print but it has some complex shapes. Um, there's a little bit of an overhang, a little bit of detail, so this one kind of covers a lot of different things. This next print is a, is a bottle opener and I want to see how strong it is and how it can print also curves and nice vertical lines if you're going to get ribbing on it. The next print is, is going to be a, a carabiner. Again, to show flexibility yet strength to see how it bends, if it breaks, if it's brittle, if it's pliable. And then for a more detailed print, something like this with, with a little bit of overhang. So I wanted to do four different prints that each cover uh, different aspects of the filament and we'll test it in a different way. Bringing in our first sample uh, test print. Since this is a PETG based filament, there's some obvious things that I'm going to have to change right away. First, I'm going to change this to 240 um, for the extruder temp and the bed temp I'm going to set to uh, 
80 degrees. Um, that's a recommended temperature because they suggest I can print between 220 and 260 on the extruder. 240 is right in the middle and they suggest an 80 degree bed temp. So that's what I'm gonna go with. So I can uh, save this G code, load it into the machine and I'll print out all four of these pieces and then we can go and see how they look. Well, I just finished printing the four different test parts with this filament, and here's what they look like. Right off the bat, I am super happy with how it turned out. All these parts are super bright and shiny, just like the filament looked on the roll. Um, and the word I, I kind of came up with that I think best describes this is um, forgiving, for, is for what I was using it. I'm using a cheap printer, and the settings might not be perfectly dialed in and I might not have the right fan or hot end or things like that, but this filament was so forgiving that I could use different settings and have the wrong exact setup and it, they still looked great. Um, and again, I was printing at 0.3 millimeter Z spacing height, which is more than I normally do, but I wanted to try to push this filament to see how it looks at you know, its worst uh, settings. I, I wanted to print them fast and quick. If, if I really wanted to print some of these parts, I would do 0.1, but I did 0.3 and it's, they still looked great. The layers still blended in with each other. More than a PLA where you would see the, the different layers lines, this just blended in smoothly and it looked really professional is how this filament turned out to me. And again, I printed uh, 235 degrees Celsius, which is in their recommended range. And I had a heated bed, but I didn't get any stringiness, any uh, bubbles or anything. Um, it really, they said it was going to be a combination of PLA and PETG and a next level and it was gonna be the best of all, all these different worlds. And I really think that's how it turned out. It, the, the parts are rigid, but they're still strong, but they're smooth. So I really like whatever formula they have for coming up with this filament. I, I really do feel like it is a step up from a PLA. So looking at the individual parts, first the chest piece, everything came out nice and smooth and the lines were crisp. The only difficulty that this might have had, and I think it's more of a, a fault of this printer, and I was printing this on the overhang. I think I needed a bigger fan. Pushing it at the speed I was printing it with the small fan that I have, typically you might want to have a bigger fan or even two fans on a nice printer. And what I was doing was trying to push it and this overhang, it came out uh, a little bit wavy, but that's because I, I normally wouldn't print at this height, um, that 0.3 millimeters. So like I said, it's more about this printer and the, the speed I was printing at than this filament. Other than that, it was just a couple wavy lines that could be easily sanded away. But other than that, all the detail and crispness and uh, the chest piece turned out really well. As far as the carabiner, um, you can test it. it. It's a little bit bendier than a PLA, but you can tell it's rigid and it's tough and it's tough uh, in the twisting direction. So it's more like a PETG, I would say, in this sense uh, as far as uh, ductability. It's got more of a, a, a bendable strength to it. And with the, uh, the bottle opener, again, this is completely rigid, but I can tell it, it's not gonna snap like a PLA. And the lines on here were very crisp and blended in. Even looking at it, you can, it's hard to pick out these individual lines. Where a PLA, you can see them clearly and you'd have to sand this away. This part, you know, I think you could, you could say it's a finished part right now. There, you don't have to do anything to it. And, and that's the advantage of printing with this filament is right out of the box, right off the print bed, you pop it off and it's good to go. You don't have to do anything else to it. So if you're gonna be printing, you know, finished parts, something that you want to turn out really nice, this is a great option. And with the Yoda figurehead, again, with the overhangs, I used uh, uh, structure underneath these overhangs, but I don't think it needed it. Even with the small fan that I had on here, this would have turned out fine without it. And even with the overhangs, it's fine. And again, with the 0.3 millimeter height, I didn't think I was gonna get a lot of detail, but it looks great in the front and on the top. You can see all the individual details on this, and I think it turned out really well. So overall, I happen to agree with them when they say this is a next level filament as, in terms of blending the, bo the best of both worlds between different characteristics of filament. It's, 
easy to print with like a PLA. It's strong and tough like a PETG and it looks good. It blends well and it has a very professional feel to it. And like I said, it's very forgiving. It hides mistakes because I know I use the same settings on some other filament and it didn't print out half as nice as some of these areas. So I really like how this filament printed and I definitely uh, recommend you go give it a try. Go over to Phyllis Struder's website, check it out and let me know what you think. Let me know if, if you tried it out and you had the same results or if you've tried it before. And if you're going to spend all this money on a printer, you might as well get some good filament. And, and that's what this is. It's just a good combination, well thought out and designed and engineered. And it just prints easy and it looks good. So let me know what you think. Thanks. Shell thickness, that's fine. Again, it'll make it a little thicker. Fill density, I might go to 40. I don't think it's going to change the print time too much. It'll make it a little stronger. It only added a few minutes. Um, support type, I'm going to go with none because this doesn't need any support. Uh, brim, I'll leave that alone to try to get the uh, filament flowing to begin with. Um, retraction, this might be a little bit uh, oozy because it is a PET, so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that. I might raise this to to five millimeters. Um, again, 120 to get a little bit of on that first layer, get a little bit of extra um, filament coming out. I might raise that to 140 just to try to get a little bit better adhesion, a little thicker on that first layer. Um, and pretty much leave all these the same. Let me go back to my print speed. So 40 millimeters per second. That's that's a good baseline to keep it. But I'm going to do the bottom a little slower, um, infill a little faster, and the outer shell a little slower. So try to get a little bit more quality. So that's how I'm going to do uh, this chest piece. The other ones I'll, I'll do a little different. Um, for that detailed print, I might uh, change this layer height and make it a little slower. Um, for the uh, the carabiner and the bottle opener, I might speed it up and I might uh, I'll, I'll increase the uh, fill density to try to make it a little stronger on those parts. Um, but I might speed it up. I might bump it up to 50 and, and bump these print speeds up a little. But this is just the baseline I'm going to do for a generic part like this.